Hi everyone, I got a really great question today about the literature matrix that I shared in a previous video. And I wanted to talk it through here just in a quick video and show you some things. So the question was, what are the colors, what do the colors mean in your literature matrix? So this is, again, this is my approach. This is how I did it. Feel free to take it and use it. I'll put the link to this matrix, an empty one, of course, um, into the description, but I want you to get a sense for how, how and why I did things the way that I did. And then you can take it and adjust it from there. So just a reminder, each of these rows is a different article that I reviewed. For some of them, I included black in the cell because I didn't have the information. It wasn't clear in the article. And it makes sense here because this first one is a conceptual paper. So it's not going to have a target population, country, sample size, instruments. They're talking about, talking about concepts and not necessarily actually conducting a study. Same thing here. This one's a qualitative thematic analysis. So it's not going to have necessarily a theoretical framework. It's not going to have an instrument because it's a qualitative study. It's really just an exploration of themes that have been identified from a number of different um, research articles. Now, if you look at row four, a deal at all 2018, you can see it's all the way filled out because I had all the information, quantitative correlational study, university teachers in Afghanistan, sample size of 500. Here's the instruments that were used, the findings, and then future research suggestions. So gave me some ideas. Okay, so all of that's filled out. There's no black. So I'm going to scroll down. You can see here, here's another one that has a lot of uh, blank information. And then you see some yellow. So I used yellow to flag some things that were close to my study. Uh, the target population for my study was instructional designers who are also considered knowledge workers. So I started looking at articles with target populations that could be considered knowledge workers, okay? So consultants at a consultant company, they're generating knowledge. Uh, they typically, you know, sit at a desk, process information, we're computer-based kind of people. They potentially could be considered knowledge workers. Same thing with white collar employees, different from a blue collar employee, right? They're more uh, desk oriented, computer knowledge generating types of roles. And then you'll see further down, I have like working Gen Y employees, which could, unless you, um, I would need to understand a little bit more about where they're working to really be able to say that they're knowledge workers, but potentially could be part of or related to the, the target population that I was working with. The other reason I'm flagging this is this could give me some ideas on, on some search terms. So if I'm looking up knowledge, like work engagement with knowledge workers who work virtually, I could also look up consultants, potentially. I could also look up white collar employees and their work engagement just to see if there's anything different and new in the library. Okay, so that's how I used yellow, something that I wanted to flag that was kind of close, um, but I might have to dig a little bit deeper to get more information. You can see there's more black here. So this narrative synthesis, not really... Um, it's just a comparison of multiple studies. This Baker and Albrecht 2018 was an editorial, so it didn't have all this information. It was really talking about the future of work engagement. So I just included the future research suggestions. Now we get to a point where we're starting to see some green. I flagged anything that really tied to my study. We talk about teleworking implications can't, it's not anything that is really straightforward, which I completely agree with. Um, so there were some things that I would flag in green that I wanted to make sure I referenced or kept front of mind. So this was like, you know, this article is a go, is kind of how I thought about it. Um, you'll see on the instrument column, I would flag things that used the same instruments that I use, the PCQ-12 and the US-9. You'll see here, I flagged some future research. So this might have been um, some notes that I had that maybe I wanted to put into my problem space or tied to the approach that I took, okay? Um, I had originally thought self-determination theory might be part of my theoretical framework. It was not, but it was flagged here. I did talk about jobs demands, uh, the, the JDR jobs demands resources model, which is tied to work engagement. So I wanted to flag those. 
um, you'll see here again, instruments, you'll see here a note about coping with physical demands and psychological capital. That was a big thing I talked about in my dissertation. So you can see I'm flagging some things as I go through. The last thing I wanted to point out is I used blue and I, I think I just needed a different color, but I added a comment and this article, I used it to support the use of a Likert scale as continuous data for my moderated regression analysis. So this was an article that I found in my research that approximated psychological capital as continuous rather than ordinal. Um, so I used that as part of my support for my data analysis um, approach. So that's where you can add some comments and flag those kind of things, okay? Choose your colors, figure out what your key is. But I just wanted to quickly go through and show you those colors. Anything that is in red, I just had not filled out yet. So I have the conditional formatting set um, because I didn't come in here and type anything in. Um, it flagged it as red. I could have typed in something like unknown and it would ta have taken the red away. But I used red to remind myself to make sure that I had actually looked to fill out all the information and get all the information that I could from each of the studies. So that was my approach to color in using the literature matrix. And I hope it's helpful for you. Um, it's a lot of work, but it really paid off when it came time to sit down and just write out and crank out that chapter two. I was able to navigate and filter really quickly and get to the things that I needed to quickly reference because it was color coded and it was filterable. So hopefully this is helpful for you and um, good luck working on your dissertation.